In this video, we've got some spectacular unseen footage and pictures from the Porsche archives as we explore the fascinating history of the Volkswagen that never was. The Porsche developed EA266. Now the problem of how to replace the rear engine Beetle plagued Volkswagen throughout the 50s and 60s. When Volkswagen tried to enlarge the format with the Type 3 and the Type 4, versions it didn't find that much success and that led it to ponder how best to proceed into the 1970s which mechanical layout would be the best. In 1967 Heinrich Nordhoff the boss of Volkswagen approached Porsche and said build us a new small car one which does not have a rear engine. Now most manufacturers would probably have gone okay well we'll do either front engine rear wheel drive or front wheel drive with a front mounted engine but no, 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 not Porsche. They had ambitious plans. Now, it should be pointed out that Porsche existed as more than a manufacturer of sports cars. Uh, Ferdinand Porsche, of course, designed the original Beetle, so Volkswagen and Porsche kind of went hand in hand. And uh, Porsche developed sports cars based on the Volkswagen platform initially. But Porsche also existed as a design and engineering consultancy, providing lots of work for other manufacturers, developing things like bulk ring synchromesh, and also helping manufacturers put their designs into practice. Ferry Porsche, the uh, son, really pushed the uh, design and engineering side of things. And I think workers were given a great deal of freedom as well. Uh, the Porsche team had helped productionize um, subsequent Volkswagens, but this time they definitely wanted to go somewhere different. So they developed a project initially called Type 1866, uh, which was a mid-engined hatchback it was doing things completely differently to anyone else. It made it absolutely unique. Porsche's solution was to move the engine underneath the rear passenger ahead of the front wheels, effectively a mid-engine layout in a hatchback with luggage space at each end. The engines were all new, available in a one litre three cylinder up to a 1.6 four cylinder, even with fuel injection. And as we can see, they planned different versions. This the basic hatchback. Then they also did a little sort of sporty number on that platform. We've got a sketch for a proper all out sports car and perhaps most intriguing, a fantastic little minibus. Now we also have some fascinating Video footage this is Napa Piri up in Finland in the Arctic Circle, and those are prototypes with Beetles and a Fiat 128 for testing purposes being tested, I believe, in about 1968. So here's one they're testing the on the limit handling in these icy conditions. So, does the mid engine give greater control uh, for this driver? Perhaps not. He's uh, merrily doing. A little donut but yeah I, I cannot believe we've got access to this real footage of the cars being tested uh, here they are being cleared of ice in the morning so these are very much development mules a long way from the finished car but nonetheless containing the mechanical package that mid-engine uh, so they can test the uh, handling so here they are driving on compacted snow so that is going to be mightily slippy and uh, some high speed footage as well. Look at that chasing the little Fiat. And uh, again on these tram lines in the snow where the ice has been really packed down. And look at that, a beautifully controlled drift. Is the Beetle as graceful? Ooh, a little more tail out with the Beetle. So yeah, this is wonderful footage of the cars being tested in Finland. We've also got footage of these cars being tested, we think in South Africa. So this looks like the cars were flown down to Africa so they had to be nervously reversed off the transport plane. Imagine that, these prototype vehicles, and you've got to reverse them down these tiny little ramps. Uh, not the job for the faint-hearted, has to be said. And here they are, all lined up and ready to go. We even caught a glimpse of 2CV there at the end. And uh, off they went to hurtle around the roads of South Africa for the hot weather testing. So as you can see, a huge amount of development was done, even when they were still at this mule stage. This is far from the final form of these little Porsches, uh, but uh, yeah, things will soon change. But all this led to a point where Volkswagen in 1969 said, yes, this is definitely the way we want to proceed. Please build 50 pre-production prototypes and let's get this thing ready 
for production. At that point within Porsche it became known as Type 1966, but uh, for Volkswagen they used the code EA266. Once approved, the styling renderings were done of the two-door, as they called it, and the four-door, although really both three and five, and then it was on to full-scale mock-up, uh, we can see being put together here, which was then presented uh, to the Volkswagen management with these rather artistic photos. Note the air intake ahead of the rear wheel for the radiator. And the front styling, which definitely has a VW vibe. This astonishing footage, it almost looks like home video footage, shows some of these early uh, prototypes getting ready for testing. And uh, we assume this is probably South Africa again. It's a little hard to tell. Uh, very artistic, look at that beautiful sunset. Again, there's the air vent ahead of the rear wheel. But this one has a rear wiper, uh, it can be noted. Uh, here, here they go, undergoing heat testing on the South African roads. And uh, it's such a fascinating little car. So this one more clearly shows the um, upright rear wiper, the rear lights very similar to the Volkswagen Polo, but really they look like nothing else. And uh, here's some fascinating footage of one going down the road. You notice it had half a spoiler on it. It's almost like they were experimenting with different ways of keeping the rear window clear. So some had a rear wiper, some had a spoiler rather like a splitter. It's a fascinating insight into these testing regimes. So further dust road testing, but look at this. This shows the effectiveness of the rear spoiler, which keeps one side clear. Whereas this one has a rear wiper instead, and that one has nothing at all. So they're obviously doing lots of very detailed tests. They must be fairly happy with the mechanical package by this stage of testing. But uh, I love this footage of going down the road and this one of them shaking hands between two cars. I'm not sure that's ever so wise. But sadly, this project was ultimately doomed. And it was doomed for a very simple reason. It was doomed because it would cost so much money to put in production. It is rumoured that when Rudolf Leiding took over as chairman in 1971, the project had already consumed some 16 million Deutschmarks. That's a, an awful lot of money. Which begs the question, how were you going to recoup those costs? And uh, while not going ahead at all may seem like madness, sometimes it's better to just write it off and say, OK, we give up. But there were other projects too. This is EA276, also a joint development with Porsche, using a Beetle engine and front wheel drive, seen here next to a Golf, and an EA266 in more modern times. So there were different projects, even within Volkswagen. And they led eventually to the Volkswagen Scirocco and then the Volkswagen Golf Mark I, which proved vastly successful all around the world. In a way, EA266 probably would not have. So here's a further look at a prototype showing the boot space in the back with the seat folded. Pretty practical. And the rather dreary interior. I imagine it wasn't just financial though. There must have been noise issues, servicing issues. Um, it wouldn't be an easy car to work on at all. How would you get access to the engine when it's mounted underneath the rear seat? Although quite a lot could probably be done from underneath the car, that doesn't make it very appealing for a DIYer, does it? And the beauty of the Volkswagen Beetle is it was always designed to be quite user-friendly to work on. So ultimately, the project would end up canned. Two prototypes seem to have survived, one of which is in Porsche's own collection. And I'm absolutely thrilled that clearly a lot of archive material remains. And also the mechanical package is fascinating. It owed nothing to any other Volkswagen. Uh, there's a one litre three cylinder, but then going up to a 1.6 litre four cylinder with fuel injection, optional five speed manuals and automatic transmissions. An awful lot of work was done looking into this fascinating project. So yeah, it's great to share this with you. And I'm hugely grateful to Porsche for sending some fascinating documentary evidence from their archives. It's a video I've wanted to make for a very long time and I never imagined I would have this glorious material to work with. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you another time for perhaps something even more extraordinary. Farewell.